So the chick is a good model system because the embryos are very amenable to manipulation and their large size also makes them much easier to work with than other embryos. Chick electroporation experiments also allow for the screening of a large number of genes in a short period of time. Hi, I'm Marissa Blank. Um, I'm a graduate student in the lab of Kathy Millen. Um, in the Department of Human Genetics at the University of Chicago. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to perform chick and ovo electroporation and we will be electroporating Hamburger and Hamilton stage 10 chicken embryos, which is uh, about two days of embryonic development in chick. The procedure is performed in our lab routinely and usually what we are studying is the effect of either overexpression or knockdown of genes in the spinal cord because we're interested in genes that are involved in development of the central nervous system. So the technique that I will be showing to you today in ovoelectroporation um, involves several steps. Uh, the first step will be windowing the egg. Um, the second step will actually be injecting DNA into the lumen of the neural tube. Um, and the third step will be using an electric field to push the DNA into one side of the neural tube and then I will show you how to close up the eggs and we'll put them back in the incubator. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about proper egg handling. So the eggs will be purchased from uh, a chicken breeder and they will come fertilized. Because these eggs contain embryos, you want to be careful about the way you handle them. So prior to incubation, the eggs should be kept at 13 degrees. For this purpose, we use a small wine uh, cooler. Um, and then once the